have Janet Rogers coming in to speak with Catelyn. And Janet is a Mohawk writer from the Six Nations Territory in southern Ontario. Um, she was born in Vancouver. She began her creative career as a visual artist and started writing in 1996. Um, her literary passions are her native heritage, feminism, historical territories, human love, sexuality, and spirit. And Janet has many anthology credits as a writer and receives many invitations to share her performance poetry all over North America. And she's recently been selected to create a work of sound art for Imagine Native Radio Art Commission. Welcome, Janet. Thank you. Hi, Janet. Welcome Hi, to the show. Thank you very much. I see you here. Pleasure. So, um, you're a busy person, and I know that you have uh, performed all over the place and all over the city. Um, can you tell me some of the projects that you've been involved with? Yeah, I'll start at the beginning of this year. Um, I was in New Zealand at the beginning of the year uh, doing uh, for a tour, I guess, basically, with um, Toi Māori. Toi Māori is like uh, the New Zealand version of uh, County Council for the Arts. They do a lot to support uh, Maori arts, and uh, I went down there as part of an exchange. So for three weeks, I got to be a writer, nothing, do nothing else but be a writer and tour around and share some um, uh, poetry and spoken word. And spoken word and, and video poetry is not something that uh, has really caught on a lot down there, which is funny. Um, but, you know, I have no doubt with the cal caliber and variety of um, arts that are practiced in um, Aotearoa that, that we'll, we will be seeing in, uh, a slew of this coming out of that culture. Um, and then I went and did, gosh, uh, oh, and then I was in Santa Fe. And uh, there I was uh, doing recording with another Mohawk poet, actually. And uh, so we together for two weeks, we did nothing but writing again. And then we um, produced a CD, and that uh, is getting launched. Actually, I'm heading back to Santa Fe uh, next week to launch the CD. And that was a combination of uh, live recording and studio recording. And it's just, you know, it kind of, it's kind of ballsy, I guess, for poets to, to do that. And it, it, we were thinking about putting out a, a two-CD set and, you know, and to get people to think, well, who do these poets think they are and putting out a two-CD set? You know, it's just poetry. But, um, you, know, we, you know, there's no boundaries around that anymore. And I'm really happy to say that. And then, um, the, and then I was working on a radio documentary, actually, with CBC uh, Radio 1 for the program Inside uh, the Music. And uh, that program was, um, the documentary was based on 50 years of Indigenous protest music. And so that aired uh, July 3rd. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm really liking what I'm doing in radio. And it seems to be kind of um, a juggernaut of sorts. The, things are building from that. Yeah. That sounds very exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you started off as a visual artist, um, and how and when did you first make your, um, not necessarily switch, but when did you become involved in some spoken word work and knew it was a passion of yours? Yeah, I had, um, like many people here, I had moved here from Toronto, and I was like done with the big city. And so in 94, I made the move uh, to Victoria, and I've been here ever since, since 94. Now, it wasn't until um, two years after I moved here that I uh, started writing. So I really blame the writing on the West Coast. Like, there's something in the air, there's something in the water, I don't know what it is, uh, that brought me into writing. And because I believe in my words, and because I wanted people to pay attention, um, I started doing spoken word because I found that that was the best way um, not to bore the audience, and that's always uh, my mandate as a writer. There's no greater crime than to be boring or to be uninteresting. So the spoken word allowed me to kind of dance the words a little stronger, and um, that's what I do. And then I started recording the poetry. So, yeah, that's what I do now. Are there certain um, themes or ideas, images that recur within your work? Well, I'm always inspired by the indigenous culture, of course, on Turtle Island. I'm always inspired by the travel, since I do travel a lot. Um, and I'm inspired just by, uh, you know, human behavior. Who isn't? <laughs> There's a lot to learn from that in general. <laughs> well, um, you have an exciting commissioning grant that you have got um, from Imaginative. And uh, you're doing that working on a piece of uh, radio uh, sound art. Yeah. Now, could you explain what 
What is the difference? If, is there one between um, spoken word and sound art? How do you conceptualize the idea of sound art? Good question. Well, we're going to find out because I've not done uh, sound art before, and I'm not sure that I have heard a lot of examples of what sound art is. And what I love about it is that it's completely open-ended. So there's no uh, parameters uh, to speak of. It's pretty abstract, and that really opens it up in a lot of ways. So, but because I'm a poet and I do love to work with poetry in a lot of mediums like um, in video poetry and recorded poetry, I want to make radio poetry. So that's um, what I've done and um, well that's what I plan to do. I will be working on in the next few weeks. So, you know, and I've been in radio for a few years now and so what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm reviewing a lot of the um, interviews that I've taken so far and, and choosing little sound bites out of that that speak to the themes I want to um, present during this radio commission. And uh, it, a lot of it has to do with identity. Like, uh, there's nothing more confusing than asking an Indigenous person, like, you know, what, what, what is that? What, it, what are you as an Indigenous person? I shouldn't say confusing, but I believe you will get as many different answers to that question as there are Indigenous people on Turtle Island. So, um, you know, let's... Let's try to contain it somewhat and, and yet at the same time put it in this forum that, that allows it to grow and breathe and, and thrive and you know, um, unfold as it will organically. So that's what I plan to do anyways. Who knows what it will turn out to be? We'll see. So when do you expect the project to be completed and where will it be heard when it is? Right. So Imagine Native uh, Film and Media Festival takes place in October every year in Toronto. And uh, since this is their inaugural um, radio commission, radio art commission, uh, it's going to be presented at the festival this year in October. Uh, it runs for a week, and I'm not sure exactly when within the week in October it's going to be presented, but it will uh, be part of uh, the screenings. And I hope to get over there for that, but we'll see. I don't know. You know, it takes money to travel. So will people here have a chance to, uh, to hear the work at any point? You know, I will, of course, the copyright of that work will remain with me. And what I plan to do is, of course, turn it into a video piece. Yeah. So, you know, I'll, and um, that gives it another avenue to exist. Um, it will be, you know, I could send it out to some uh, film, other film festivals and present it in that way. And, of course, there's always the internet, you know. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to um, read a couple of pieces for us tonight, I believe. Yeah. Can, can you tell us what those are? Sure. Uh, I, I'm going to present a couple of spoken word pieces, and the first piece is actually a piece I wrote while I was in New Zealand, and it is about New Zealand. And then the second piece is um, just one of my more political pieces, and uh, we'll see. Is everything okay with the sound? Yeah. Is my lapel? Oh, this is so much bullshit. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Well, maybe I should just like take it off. Okay. And and I'm gonna. It's okay if I stand. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> such bullshitness. Here, take it off of me. Here, I'm gonna give you. Uh, <laughs> or I could stand. Are over you there. gonna go up on? If the I could. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there we go. I should get rid of that. Okay. Okay, I'm moving over. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Okay, ready, steady? Okay, this is a piece called uh, Hey Tangata, Life is People. The highs are higher here, the moon more silver. Time takes on shape, ripe fruit ready in the orchard, crossing over, dying a shaman's death. To exist amongst men with slapped red chests, Black-lipped sisters, hymnal rhythms thick as brick walls, impacts just as strong. Decorative weapons, warriors of the mind, kind kin begin again after natural disasters, fallen heritages delivering messages to move on, fear not, move on. These beautiful people of bright song, these brown relations, these strong people of swelling pride, these brave wave travelers with teams of fierce intention stood before women, unwounded, unwavering protection. These tribal people of wood and reeds, feathers in ink, mysteries in genealogy, the wind, the wind, the wind. Listen, 
blood wars, love chants, walking original canvas, storytellers and prophecies grow and thrive in this era of interesting time, this area of airborne light, in this place of honey magic bumblebee medicine. I love it. Together we stand under one sun and cast new shadows over welcoming grasses. I want to trace the silhouettes and dress the naked space with words of appreciation. But there are no words I know in any language written or spoken to express the depths of emotion of this movement of our memories this time together can describe. Regretfully, I have nothing, nothing but these inadequate words as a way to say, hey, Tangata, life is people. We all come from somewhere. And we travel from one end of the earth to the other looking for something. Measure time in distance and count the miles between us until we reunite. Take flight. Keep flying. Find your personal thermal. Spin golden threads, memory webs around the globe. We are never alone. Hey, Tangata! Hey, Tangata! Hey, Tangata! Life is people. Thank you. I'll just rub the mic so we're used to that sound again. Here we go. <laughs> this is awful. Anyways, um, <laughs> here's, another, here's another piece. This is called Distractions. <clears throat> the stars are distracting me with their beauty, keeping me from duty and purpose. Your voice is distracting me, telling me to move on. Don't linger too long where visions are born. Cities get torn between progress and politics. Nations balance, they straddle two worlds, two sides out of doubt or compliance as we exercise caution in our need to proceed along new paths. Where we feel our way into dark tomorrows, moving with ancient faith, we create deep tracks left for anthropologists to make fiction of our past. Where are we now? Where are you now? Even on the outside, we still hold a place, embrace liberation inside, living on the outside of normal. Ground zero, where concepts of the minority are actually the majority, and all of us who don't fit in begin to win votes, undo what we know not to be true, live by our own codes, love those we want, and only those who love us back. We celebrate this fringe of forced displacement. Our uniqueness brought us here where we dance to our own drum, speak in our own tongues, live by our own laws because we have found each other in the fringe. Thanks so much.